Welcome to a ink review. And this is an ink review of Noodler's L. Lawrence. Um, it's about it's it's morning over here. Um, the first day of kind of an official stay-at-home order. So I'm gonna do a lot of videos today. I think today I'm gonna start with um, the ink review, then jump into an ink drawing. Not sure what color I'm going to use for the uh, ink drawing. Then later on, a watercolor painting. Then after that, probably an oil painting. So I've got a lot of stuff planned for um, this kind of lockdown. Even though it's not really a lockdown, it's kind of just stay at home order type thing. We could still kind of go out and walk and ride bikes and stuff like that and food shop if necessary. But it's just a little weird. Anywho. Back to this. So we got Noodler's L. Lawrence. Um, this is an ink that I bought over a year ago. Uh, a Noodler's ink that I had purchased because of its properties and whatnot. Uh, this is my search for uh, bulletproof UV resistant inks. So I'm going to try it out in two different pens. I have a, a Noodler's Conrad. This one is uh, the Forbidden City, I believe. I'll throw some ink in there. And I already have it in a pen that I had restored earlier this week. A, um, a vintage Waterman. I had picked it up for cheap cheap and then did a lot of cleaning with it and um, replace the ink sack and whatnot. So it was just a lot of fun. So let's start off with this guy and we'll write it. I've also been practicing my handwriting and my script. L. Lawrence, a um, Noodler's Inc. The scripted eye is something that I've just been having so much difficulty with remembering how to write it. Anyway, uh, this is a green group. So I have their stats here. I'm going to write it out just so you can kind of see what it looks like. I always thought of it as like a black with that um, green aspect of it. So group green uh, properties It comes in a three ounce bottle only. It is archival. Bulletproof. I'll move the bottle because of the shadow. It's fluorescent. I did not know that. Still waking up, still getting like my joints and all that hands flow and whatnot. So I feel like this, rather than starting right off with a uh, piece of art, is a good way to uh, get me moving. So it's forge resistant. And it is water resistant. Okay, um, some F's, some figure eights, you can see how that 
looks when I smear it. So that um, definitely shows that green that takes place. I think, um, man, I, I'd hate to say what I think it's from. I think it's from Lawrence of Arabia or something like that, but I've never seen it. And that's probably like a sacrilege saying something like that. But um, maybe during this time period, I could watch some of the classics. Last night, we decided to start watching um, all of the Star Wars from beginning to end. So we had started with number one. Um, not the original first. We're going to do it in um, sequential, not not chronological. Well, I guess it would be chronological order, but not filmed chronological order. Yeah, you know what I mean, I think. Anyway, so this is it in the, um, in the Conrad. So let's see. Oh. In a... Um, this one, I still have uh, the flex nib in it, the, um, the Noodler's nib. So let's see how it works. I'm getting some railroading with it. Let me vary my pressure and speed. Not getting too much line variation with it. Which is weird. I'll tell you a secret about this one. This one I had filled with, um, I had filled with Kung Te Ching, like, and Kung Te Ching sitting in it for a long time. Near the end, the nib started to get a little gunky, but it just flowed so perfectly with the Kung Te Ching in it that I just didn't want to clean it out and all that. But being that everything is just on lockdown and whatnot, I've been so bored, I went through and cleaned most of my pens. So for some reason, it just worked so well with um, the Kung Ti Ching in it. So I'm not sure if that's just a property of this one. Let me see. I was having trouble with uh, flexing with this one as well, where I'm getting the railroading right away. So. I'm not sure if it's an adjustment I have to make with my pens or what. That I don't know too much about. Like, I know about the adjustment. I don't know about the ink properties towards working within different flexing pens, if that makes sense. So um, let's just do, I guess, a little bit of writing. I've been coming up with a I guess, I guess it's kind of silly. I guess it's kind of dark, but it's, um, let's see, the quarantined fox, we'll call him Mr. Brown. practices social distancing by jumping least six feet over the lazy dog who's speak 
counts as up right there. <laughs> Apostrophe. <laughs> Lifestyle. Has not been affected. Is it affected or affected? Like I said, still early in the morning, still trying to get everything flowing. Um, I'll do uh, one more writing. This is with the um, the vintage pen. Still, like I said, just trying to wake up the quarantined fox. Mr. Brown. Social. lifestyle yeah. who's hmm. oh, now I'm messing up with spelling and everything whose lifestyle has not with affected and one with affected. So I think within the pens themselves you could see the different variation in um, tone. This one is more of that uh, tannish green. This is more darker and whatnot. I think what we can do is do a little sketch at the bottom here and see how it looks if we were to actually um, use it to draw a picture and use it for artwork. We'll do something pretty simple, a simple landscape. There are little trees coming up. with pressure we could get a variety of tones with this one Let's see how light we can get I'm kind of skipping lines far distant hill even farther there. Trees in the distance. This right here, you can consider that like a stopping image where if the eye travels, it stops at that point. A little texture for the grass. 
shadows at the base of these trees, shadows on the underside, and foliage. Let's um, have a landmass come right here. This extends behind. Waterway opening up in front of us. Have kind of a curve in the bend right here. Waterway open. This is we have the bottom edge of the drawing. Here we can do big old gnarled tree coming up. Its reflection is going to mirror that shape. Some rocks at the bottom. Have him come up. Maybe the underhang of his foliage. Put a fence back in here. Actually, since we put a fence in, let's have it lead to a bridge. Dark the underside of the bridge. Let's continue on the other side. Reflection of the bridge on the water. I always like to darken the edge of um, any land against water. Uh, we could have could even put a house back here. I don't know if I can fit it, you know, since we're doing ink. There we go. A little house. Smokestack. Maybe give it a path, and then the fence is alongside that path. Fence could lead up to it. And our eye travels through. We put something here to stop the eye from going off the page. This is just an impromptu sketch, just so you can see what it looks like for artistic purposes. Um, as you can see, see the smearing, if I wanted, let's just go right here and smear that as if we wanted to use the grass. I'm kind of um, partial to ink washes because they just don't, like in general, regardless of what I use, I just don't think ink washes, I'm not, I don't think I'm that good at them. But, um, you see that green tone that you can get with it. Then, you know, of course, with art, you can keep tickling it as long as you want, but we could even put 
this green. It's me right there in that tree. So, um, yeah, you can see you could get like a lovely monotone with this. I don't know if people have really used L. Lawrence for art. I might have done it once in the past, like a few times. Like, um, what I did was I cut up um, some watercolor paper or the backs of um, watercolors, paintings that didn't make the cut, and um, would practice ink drawings on the back of them. I think I, I might have used L. Lawrence. I might have used L. Lawrence with a brush as well. Anyway, um, what else can be said about this? I know I'm dragging this on, but you know, you're welcome to skip to any point, obviously. Or... I just close out altogether. Or watch the whole thing. Somebody said yesterday that I had a radio sounding voice. Um, I don't hear it, but um, I I appreciate that. That that was that made me feel good waking up and seeing that. Um, so that was the one pen. Let's do new layers down here. And I figure, let's see. Great for writing. And art All right smear with finger <clears throat> so that's good if you have something like this to only have um, one pen with you where you can do that and if you're sketching out and about in public, you literally just have your paper and one pen. And this is the Rhodia paper. And you can smear it and get your tonal values in that. So that's actually a really good benefit for this ink. I think it's in general. So anyway, I think at this point, we'll um, call it done. I'll take a photo and I will upload this. Uh, hopefully, I'll... See you all soon, and have a great day.